Hey y'all, I'm Kendrick Show. Now I know what you might be thinking. Oh great, here comes another person telling me a ton of skill sets that I need to run a successful business. But not so quick. I'm gonna share with you today a no BS, true way to make money in your business. You are in for a treat today because we have Travinia here from Priority VA. And I gotta tell you straight up ladies that her free download is called 11 Ways to Win in Your Business. I don't think I've ever started a show with 11 Ways to Win in Your Business, the free download, but when I saw it, I was like, I have to know more. First of all, who doesn't love to win, right? And 11 ways. Now, oh my goodness, I shook my heart. I'm so excited, I'm about to shake out of my chair. So, Tremidia, welcome to Sell Like a Woman, the podcast. Um, it's an honor to have you here. Oh man, it's my honor to be here. Thank you so much, Kendrick. And that free download is honestly one of the funnest things we've ever put together. We have over 35, I think, online entrepreneurs, um, some of the best of the best in our space right now who gave us their best tips on working with virtual teams and how they use a VA to win in their business. That's awesome. So I want to come back to that, but uh, if, if you all are like, how can I get it? How can I get it? We're going to put it in the, put the link to, to, for you to get it on the website. But Trevenia, tell, tell our audience what you do specifically. Yeah, so I own a virtual staffing company, so it's called Priority VA, and what we do is we match high growth entrepreneurs with talented virtual assistants so they can grow and scale their business in a predictable way. Okay, so this is something that really caught my attention. When you talk about a predictable way, because one of the things I hear a lot is, and, and I also remember experiencing it, was when things were very unpredictable. You know, it was sort of feast or famine. You'd have a, whatever, your best month ever, and then it would be like no money coming in. And so is that what you mean by predictable, or what do you mean? Yeah, it's in some ways, for sure. But what we mean by predictable is really when you're working with a virtual team, I think sometimes we have a lot of balls in the air, right? We don't really know who's doing what, how things are going. And there's a lot that needs to be done, especially if we're in sort of ramp up or scale up stages of our business. So when we bring on a virtual assistant into people's business, it helps them to grow and scale predictably because systems are predictable. The output of the work that you're getting is predictable, which allows you then to focus on things in your business that you really should be focusing on. Because oftentimes, if we're honest as entrepreneurs, you're pulled in a million directions. And especially as we're growing, you know, maybe you're the one who's editing podcasts and you shouldn't be doing that, right? So if we bring on someone to help you do that, it helps you just, you know what your days are looking like and it's not fire after fire. So that's what we mean mainly by predictable. I love it, not fire after fire. So one of the reasons that I was so excited to have you here, uh, I'm gonna give some confessions here on the show. Some of you may or may not know about me, but uh, one of my worst VA moments was we were ramping up into, I, I have been in business for a long time at this point, <laughs> ramping up into the biggest launch that, to that point in our, in, in, since I opened the doors or whatever, I, I have a door, but you know, <laughs> okay, right here, open my door. And we had hundreds of emails coming into customer service and we couldn't handle them all. And I was mortified. I literally called one of my clients and said, hey, you want some extra hours answering emails? I mean, I didn't know what to do. And really, the hire of that woman saved that launch. It was our best launch ever, but it was a, I hate this word, shit show behind the scenes. And I don't like that. I don't function well there. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I've been so surprised about is how many people's business is really chaotic behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that a lot of them are. My business is even chaotic behind the scenes. You know, sometimes I'm like, I wish things would go more smoothly in uh -huh. my business too. But what a, building a great team, virtual team in my world does for you is it allows you to kind of address those moments. And so when you debrief on that launch, you're able to realize, okay, what were the, the things that we need to shore up and fix so that as we go into the next launch, it's not the shit show. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So, yeah that... I think that the behind the scenes of anyone's life is so much different than we project on social oh. media, but the goal needs to be to always get better, you know, to always fix those impediments to our progress. Yeah. I love that. I, I was talking to one of my friends this weekend, Tanya Lee, and she said, you know, Kendrick, I love that, you know, I, I, I actually, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a customer of Tanya's too. I, we were friends first and I love her work and I was doing one of her 
um, modern day icon and, I, and then she was like, I love that we constantly get to reinvent ourselves and change and learn. And she's like, you're never going to have it all figured out. I'm like, I know, but gosh, don't we want to, <laughs> Sometimes I want to, but no, I, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So I have another confession. I don't usually get this many confessions, but true story today, my assistant said to me, Kendrick, I've learned so much from you that I am leaving you. And so she's leaving, which is wonderful for her. I'm super excited. But I was like, all right, universe, Trevini yeah. is on the show today. So, you know, everybody listening, I'm getting ready to, to do a little self-serving and get <laughs> down and dirty with Trevini. So as I look for a new assistant or as our audience looks for a new yeah. assistant, tell me what are some things that we need to take into consider consideration? So this is always a, a little bit of a touchy topic, especially when you're in a position like you are. Maybe Kendrick, I don't know how much notice the VA gave you. I hope it was a lot, but yeah, a lot. okay, good. Fantastic. That's great. But sometimes people can find themselves in a position where they need somebody fast. And that's where that knee jerk reaction of like, just get a body comes into play. And that is such a disservice to who we are as business owners and to our customers and the people that we serve. So one of the things that I would encourage everyone to do is to really figure out the what, the, the things that you have to have that person. In your case, it's going to be entreport, right? They're going to need somebody who, you need someone who knows that system like the back of their hand because that's the non-negotiable as far as the tasks go. Mm -hmm. But then there's a whole other thing that I think most people fail to pay attention to and that's the who. And so we spend a lot of time working on our ideal client avatar, right? We know what they wear. We know where they're going to shop. We know their personality, what music they listen to. And we do that for our customer all the time but none of us do that for our ideal teammate and that's what I want people to do is to build an avatar for who their ideal teammate is know the temperament the character the personality traits that you need them to bring to the table whether that's things that are going to be um, figured out in a personality assessment right so maybe I'm an ENTJ right and so I know that I really can't have another ENTJ working with me it is just not gonna fit <laughs> yeah. and so or I know on my disk profile that I'm super high D and so I need someone who's gonna be more in the S range to kind of balance that out because my S is super low right and so that's what I want people to take into consideration when they're hiring more than they know on report yay right because yeah. that's not the success that's not a recipe for long-term collaboration and success you know and we want that's another thing that's important I think for people to know is we want a VA that's going to be with us for the rest of our lives right and while that's a great thing to shoot for I love looking back over my shoulder and seeing what Amy Porterfield and I built together that was amazing but four and a half years into it I needed to create my own thing, right? Yeah. I needed to do that. And so I think that if you can get three or four years out of a virtual assistant, amazing. That is amazing. And so you have to plan for that chunk of time. And so doing that means not just knee jerk, they know Entreport or they know Infusionsoft or, oh, they know how to do Facebook ads. Let's build in something for the long haul. I love this. And it's so interesting to me. My glasses are dirty, so I'm just going to take them off and I can still see. Uh, it's so interesting to me that my knee jerk reaction this morning, I, I, I tend to tornado. I want to fix yeah. everything. And, 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 I, I, ugh, and I just want a solution, a solution, a solution. And so I got up and I walked to my kitchen. I don't know why my kitchen. And I walked back and I was like, just breathe. Like just breathe. You have plenty of time, but, but the, you know, the entrepreneur I was last year, I probably would have been on the phone. Like, can you start tomorrow? This is one of the things that I think is really hard for a lot of creative entrepreneurs to learn because we spend so much time learning how to grow our business and how to run an online business. But I think you're so right. I mean, I, 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 I have had experiences where I've had great VAs on the other end, but our personalities were kind of like oil and water. Yeah. And um, that's not fun. <laughs> I, I've said a lot that when systems and when technology fail, when I sent an email out to 200,000 people one time from my client's private email address. <laughs> 
when things like that happen, it's the relationship that we fall back on, right? So it's, she knew that I was not malicious in that. She knew that I, it's not that I wasn't paying attention to detail. It was just a mistake and that there will be spilled milk in these relationships. But when we go into it, knowing that the integrity and the character of the person is truly has our best interest at heart, those little things that will happen, they, they are less painful, you know, and then we're less likely to knee jerk and fire them, right? Because yeah. they made a mistake. Yep, absolutely. So one of the things that I would love to talk about, and I don't, I, it, may, it may be out there, but I, I don't hear a lot of people talking about it, is I, I, I hear lots of people saying, you know, what do I need to consider as a hire? What do I need to do? What, what? But I am curious about what makes an employer mm -hmm. a good employer of a VA? What types of things do we need to learn? Yeah, that is a great question. I would say that 85% of the clients that we work with have zero idea how to delegate. So they like to be, I, I've kind of, I want to trademark this phrase, but uh, they are like helicopter CEOs, right? They're yeah. hovering. And just like our kids are never going to learn to ride a bike as long as we're holding on to that back of the seat, your VA is never going to learn how to really truly be empowered to take on outcomes in your business, not tasks. Right. So we want to we want to outsource outcomes, not just the two or three checklist of items. You want to make them be uh, responsible for the entire outcome of a project. Dan Martell calls that LMA lead, manage and be accountable. So that's what we want to work toward in the relationship. But a lot of clients struggle so much to do that because it means letting go. You know, it means living with our business like this instead of it's my baby. And so I, I think that the thing that we can do as entrepreneurs is really start to document, document, document your process, your preferences, your systems, right? Because you may want, I had a client once that wanted emails only sent out in 14 point aerial font. And if it wasn't, they were like cranky mad, right? And so documenting those non-negotiable things for you are really important. And then another thing that often I find happen is that clients will typically blow off meetings with their VAs. You'll have a meeting, you're busy, you're stressed out, you have other things going on, you know, the kids are crying, and that's the first meeting to fall off. And so you don't respect, in a sense, the VA's time. I never thought about that. You know? Yeah, so it's easy because it's like, oh, we'll just chat later. You know, and oftentimes the VAs take it on the chin. They're like, all right, fine. But what you, a lot of people don't realize is that you're slowing down the progress that your VA can make. Not only are you sort of messing with the rapport that you're built, trying to build with the VA, because it's just it's disrespectful if we're being honest, right? They then have to wait for you to get back, circle back around, be in the right headspace, and then engage them in conversation. So that, that's another simple tweak I think that clients can make to really serve their VA well. And then I'd say probably the third and final thing is to communicate with them. And it can be a quick Slack message, send them a Voxer, do those things. Because what we don't realize is that your assistant wants to help. I mean, assistant is in the title. So like they want to help you. And so just let go, give them the keys to the car and empower them to make decisions in your business. Yeah, I love that. And I am a helicopter mom. I'm, I'm trying to work on it. And I am a helicopter CEO. Yep. I, I'm using your term, obviously. But one of the things, one of the best things that ever happened to me in this business was taking on way too much. Yeah. And it was the hardest year in my business. I was sick. I, was, I mean, you know, just drama, drama, drama. Yeah. And I had no choice but to hand off. I had no choice but to say, not, not like this, but just drop it. And you know, <laughs> it was awful. Yeah. It was awful. It just, everything sort of gelled at once. And I made some bad decisions and said yes to too much. And you know the story. Yep. So, but it really has allowed me to, and I'm not great at it, but I'm much better. It's allowed me, like I was doing something this morning in Vimeo, pulling up links. And I thought, why am I doing this? Uh -huh. Why am I doing this? I mean, not that I can't, I'm not capable, but why am I doing this? I'm, I'm wasting my time looking for these dang links. So for sure. Uh, another, a quick tip for your audience too. And it's, it sounds so trite and just too simplistic, I think, for people. But for a long time, I had a post-it note on my monitor, just on the side of my monitor, and it said, do you need to be doing this? You oh, know, and it, and it was just this reminder of like, why am I on Vimeo? Like, that's so stupid. You know, or uh, above, my, above my wall in my office right now, so I'm reading it, it says, do what you love, love what you do. 
And it's just a reminder of me that if I don't love what I'm doing, then why don't I figure out a way to outsource it? I love it. I'm writing down, do you need to be doing this? Exactly. Everybody listening, you should do that. I tell you all to write down, selling is helping. Write down, do you need to be doing this? I love it. And I think that it will just be that reminder. And what most people will see is that they're going to start to group things together, that it's a lot of the technical things, right? And so you'll start to, it's it's interesting how it happens, but you build kind of a little profile of like, these are the things that I hate doing in my business, or these are the things that I never have time to do in my business that are on the back burner all the time, right? Those are the things that get transferred to your to-do list every day. (laughs) They go to, yeah, yeah. that's when you start to realize quickly what to outsource. So next question. Yeah. Talk to me about, so one of the things, well, let me back up. One of the best things I learned from, I, I don't know if it's one of the best because I learned so much, but one of the many amazing things I learned from Jenny, she is assume that you made the error first. Yeah. So, and that was great for me because I never had people, I mean, I was always, you know, the bottom of the total pole. Like, yeah. I never had anybody to report to or whatever sure. reporting to me. So, and I like, like in the example where the email goes out to 200,000 people yep. or whatever from a private server and, and you're right, relationship matters so much, but Jenny always says, assume that it's your fault. Take responsibility the first time and say, you know what, maybe I wasn't clear, perhaps, you know, I could see how it would be confusing or whatever. And it's such a great tip for me because I have a tendency to want to react, but I'm curious, what about if it if it ends up being the wrong person, you know, sometimes it's just the wrong person. Either I'm the wrong person for them. Yep. You're the wrong person for you. What, what's the, what's the best way to handle that? Just be, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, I actually just had this conversation at a live event that I was at and someone was needing to let go of a virtual assistant, that just great person. They had a great friendship, but not the right fit for the job. And what I learned when I worked with, there's a great company called hire to fit. So if you're hiring an employee, hundred percent, oh my gosh, go deal with, with a, a guy named David Bonney. He's amazing. He helps you really figure out who the right fit for your business is. But he taught me hire and fire to fit always right? And, and to values. So if you know the values, those core values in your business, for me, they're truth, character, responsibility, and service. Like that's it. And so if I have communicated those clearly, that's the taking responsibility part, right? Cause that's what you have to do as the business owner. And you have demonstrated to your team what that looks like in your business. Yeah. Um, and they are consistently not meeting those values. Then it's easy to fire them because you just have the conversation of, These are our values. We've made them super clear. These are the areas in which we are seeing that you're not, you know, adhering to our values or meeting our standards. And so it's not a fit and it's not right or wrong. And that's important. I think to let people know is that it doesn't mean that Kendrick is amazing and she knows everything and the VA is horrible. It just means it's not a fit. And it's almost sometimes a relief for the assistant too, because they're trying and they're failing miserably and they know it's not a fit, but they need the money or, you know, whatever it is. And so sometimes you're, you're really solving their problem too, by letting them get to a place where they are a fit. Okay. So I, I read on um, girl boss uh, recently. And one of the things she says is I, I'm going to, I'm going to butcher it because I don't, re- I've read like 25 books since then, but you know, it don't, mm, I'm gonna butcher it. don't be friends with your employees. It, it's not your job to be friends with your your staff or whatever, you're their boss. Yeah. I do. I mean, I personally disagree because my life is so built on relationships. I mean, that's just such a foundation to who I am. And so I probably really suck at that. Um, I engage with my employees. I ask that I know what happened to their kids last weekend. You know, like that's really important for me personally I think that that's going to be individual for everyone. I mean, some people need that thick line in the sand where they're like, I can't cross that boundary. Um, I have cried when VAs left me because I like loved them so much. And in those moments, sure. I'm like, dang it. Like I shouldn't get so close. Right. But, but I think in the end, uh, relationships win. I, I just feel like they do. They do in a sales process. They do in, you know, when we're networking and engaging with people. And so I feel the same way for our team personally. So yeah. I don't know. Sorry, girl boss, but mm. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was one of those things I remember. Actually, I listen to books. I don't read them. My daughter says, "You don't tell people you read, mommy." You listen. To <laughs> listening, but I remember I paused it and I was like, "Hmm, 
I can see why someone would say that. And certainly she runs a multi-million dollar business, respect the heck out of it, but I'm like, gosh, I'm yeah. a relationship person. Like I kind of need that level of intimacy with people yeah. in order to do this, right? Yeah, yep. and, yes. and you know, I an interesting thing that I, I remember saying this once at a, at a conference that I spoke at, and I said, you know, if you treat your team like the hired help, then you cannot be surprised when they act like the hired help, right? But if we focus on relationship and you need them to give because you're in launch mode and your cart closes at midnight and the link's broken or you need them on chat so that you're closing more sales, you don't get that out of hired help. You get right. that out of relationship. And so I don't know. I, I just feel like, yeah. That's a great point. Yeah, I completely agree. Okay, so when... Our, our people, our, our entrepreneurs are sitting in the audience or writing or whatever you're doing. Maybe you're working out. Could you work out some for me listening to, to us? And they're in, the, in need to find a VA. Yeah. To deal with you and your priority VA, you use, you, you, yours is contract only. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're a contract. We don't do, we don't hire out, uh, okay. you know, we're not a placement agency where we're right. a headhunter for you. Yeah. So it's okay. contracted with us. And then, so the first step is before they come to you, would that be to do the avatar? Do you give them some parameters? Like, do they just contact you first and say, I need some help? Yeah, so a few things, actually. What I often do for people so that they can sort of figure out what they need outsourced is I tell people to just for a week, kind of like if you were tracking your nutrition, I want you to track your tasks or tasks that you know you need filled up. And I ask people to put those into four different columns. The things that you don't know how to do. So this is the stuff that you're like watching YouTube videos, trying to figure out, you know, how to put a yeah. pixel on yeah. or whatever. Um, so things you don't know how to do, the things that you don't have time to do. And this can typically be stuff that you actually enjoy doing, but you just don't really have time. It's always on the back burner. And then the stuff that you don't want to do, this is the stuff you absolutely know. You know how to go to Vimeo and get the link, right? But you want to gouge your eyes out every time it's you doing it. Yeah. And then the stuff that only you can do. And so for most people, the first thing that they should be outsourcing is the stuff they don't know how to do because yeah. that just speeds up their process, right? They can just go on to working on stuff. You might have to muscle through and get the Vimeo link for a while until you have, you know, another person on your team. Yeah. But then, so stuff you don't know how to do first, stuff you don't want to do is typically next because then that frees you up to do the stuff that you don't have time to do that you typically enjoy doing. And then really the ultimate goal is to free you up so that you are only focusing on the stuff that only you can do. Okay. I got to ask a question about this. It just okay. came up as I heard you break it down. It's a, it's a great thing. Great way you broke it down, by the yeah. way. Thank you for that. Yeah. One of the things, um, I talk about Jenny a lot because Jenny is super organized and super structured and I'm not when it comes to this. One of the things she had me do a long time ago was we got a, a Google Excel spreadsheet. It's not Excel, but whatever those things. Sheet. We got a Google Sheet. And she made tabs at the bottom and I don't know what the categories were, but I've tried to list out those, you know, yeah. some of those things. And one of the things that's hard about that is that takes some dedication. I mean, you have to be committed to do it. You can't be so busy putting out fires because your VA is gone. I mean, you have to say, wait, I should not be going to Vimeo. Let me pull up my sheet. It's hard. Any yeah. not hard. It but, is hard. Oh, believe me. It's, I, I'm struggling right now. I mean, and this is what I liken it to is I have my fitness pal where I'm supposed to be tracking what I, yeah, yeah. and I get the stupid reminders. And now yeah. they've even told me like, it seems like this isn't helpful. We're going to stop reminding you, right? Yes. Because I'm not even logging it. So yes, a hundred percent. I acknowledge that it is challenging, but what it will do for you, just like tracking our meals, right? It's going to show you where the gaps are. It's going to show you where the goals are in your business. And if we're truly wanting to grow and scale, we have to be honest about that and we have to look at it. And so, yeah, that's where I say like, suck it up people. You can so, do. And so I had Jennifer Allwood on here not too long ago. And a lot of people in our world don't know her because, um, she's, she does, a, she teaches a lot of people how to paint and refurbish furniture and things like that. But she has 400 plus followers on social media, 40, 50,000 people on her email list. And that's what she was on here talking about. And she was talking about posting on Facebook every day. And I was like, okay, whoa, 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 what do you mean by every day? Like Christmas day? Yes. What about when you're sick? Yes. I was like, do you schedule it? No. And I was like, I, I, I'm calling BS on that. How do you do it? And she said, because somebody told me if you are serious about your business, you can do this one thing. Mm. I was like, oh, 
Okay, sort of the same thing, yeah. right? If you're serious about growing and scaling and not putting out fires all the time, then you just have to commit to do this. Exactly, exactly. And I think that sometimes people, they look at sort of what they think is this big giant thing, especially when I start talking about documenting systems and process, they're like, I don't have time, I don't have time. And I'm like, I'm calling BS on it because yeah. right now you're doing the task anyway. Right. So open up Jing, it's a free program, you know, and record yourself doing it or viewed it or Loom. There are tools out there that thank God have been created for people yeah. like us to just record it, throw that in a Google Doc and call it good your VA can organize it pretty for you when you have them okay so I want to shift gears just a little bit and also yeah. be respectful of your time but I, I, I'm, I'm I love this thank you so much absolutely I mean, so I want to talk about your story because a lot of people probably know you you referenced that you worked for Amy before yeah. or worked with Amy before so can you tell us about like prior to that what did yeah. you do and I know this is a stereotypical question no, it's okay so fascinated. It, it's fun and it's actually I think that it's really empowering to other women and other moms specifically so I actually started out working virtually about almost 14 years ago um, when I had my first daughter I begged my corporate company to let me work at home a little bit and they did and so I would work half time in the office, half time at home. And so I started working virtually. And it was funny because I used to tell them all the time, like, dude, I can do all of this from home. But it wasn't until I needed maternity leave that they were like, oh, maybe you could do this from home, you know? Oh, and, yeah. and so it worked out. And so then I had another daughter. So I asked for another day at home. Uh, so I was working two days in the office, two days at home. And then I, I always have worked, tried to work a four day work week by the way, I highly recommend it. But, um, and then my husband and I decided we, well, we were called by God, if I'm being honest, uh, to adopt a child. Oh, wow. and when that happened. She had a lot of special needs. She was in therapy five times a week. And inevitably the therapist would cancel like on the day I was home, but they would want to, you know, come when I was supposed to be in the office. And at that point I was like, I can't, like, I got to put this kid first. You know, we made this choice. We're doing it. So I went all part-time, all virtual, and really started working, you know, just as a virtual assistant for them only part-time. And then a few years went by, they got bought out by a national company. And then I was like, oh gosh, they're like, come on back. I was like, oh, thank you. No. <laughs> I started, the other side. Yeah, exactly. So I started the, I started just working as a virtual assistant for some people. I got uh, assigned with Michael Hyatt as yeah. my, my first big client, had several other little ones. And through Michael, met Amy. Uh, start, and then I was working with Amy and Michael specifically, just you know them each twenty hours a week. So I was full time. And then Michael's business started growing, and Amy's business started growing. And it was like, oh my gosh, holy cow! And really, when I got those two clients, um, people just would randomly call me. They would email me. They would find me on Facebook and say, "Can you work for me too? Can you work for me too?" And I was like, "No, um, but I can talk to you about maybe who you can hire." And and I started doing stuff for free a lot, just really talking to them and and about the character, the integrity, all the stuff that they wanted. And really light bulbs just started going off of like, well, this is good. Like you want to work with me because of these things that I bring to the table. Well, why don't I just find you someone that brings those same things to the table? So Priority VA was born a little over four years ago in that way. We have since, um, scale like I mean in my mind it's crazy and some people it's slow but uh, we did uh, 1.3 million I think last year that's it's crazy fast yeah. congratulations it's, that's it's, amazing it's insane uh, we we now we work with subcontractors so we don't employ we have now employees that work directly for prior to VA but all of our VAs are subcontractors we have over 70 of them now and uh, and just serve some of the most amazing clients ever so it's it's a lot of fun how do you keep track of 70? I mean, how can you know that 70 VAs, I, 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 oh my gosh, that makes my head spin. How can you know that this is a good fit for? Yeah, well, I have a team now that helps me. Okay. We actually have okay. a full-time recruiter that helps me okay. really well until we got to about 40 VAs. Then I started like losing track of who was matched with who and what they were doing. And, uh, and so that's, that was really the, the impetus for me to start to plan a transition out of working with Amy and just being fully you know, invested in Priority VA. One of the things that is kind of the magical piece to all of this is that I was able to grow our business by the grace of God over a million dollars working part-time. I mean, because I was still working with Amy part-time too. That's and right. so one of the biggest things for me was if I did that part-time, like what could we do full-time? Yeah. How many more lives could we impact? Because that really for me, Kendrick, is that's what this is all about is that 
there are clients who have dreams and hopes and aspirations for their business and them just getting a little bit of help can help make that happen. That's one piece of it. And then on the flip side, I work with a lot of moms who were struggling to figure out how can I provide my fa- for my family? How can I still go to the kindergarten field trip to the zoo? You know, and how can I still use the skills that God gave me? You know, because we're often told like choose be an entrepreneur or you know be a mom. Oh, yeah, it's, yes, absolutely. And I feel like we can do both. I truly, within my heart of hearts, feel like there is no work life balance. You can do both and do it really well. And so we're providing a lot of moms with that opportunity too. And so. We're not curing cancer, but we are changing lives, and I like them. That's beautiful. I I completely agree. I always say, if you can make somebody's life, business, health, weight, pleasure better, why would you not? Exactly. Why would you not? Yeah. Okay. So I could talk for hours about this. Um, I think that... I so said the final question, this is, this is, this is ridiculous. I actually have two more. It's a ridiculous question, but I know somebody in our audience will say, why didn't you ask this? So you've seen, and you have created an extremely successful business. You've been behind the scenes in two of the rock star businesses yeah. in the online world. Is there a commonality, not, not divulging secrets, but is there a commonality? Is there something that you know to do that Porterfield knows to do that Michael Hyatt knows to do? that you can share? Um, I would say I'm stealing Amy's words, but, uh, but it's so, so true is that, you know, just taking a little bit of action every single day, because I think that what I notice in my own life and, and in a lot of our clients' lives is they're sort of like, I just need a break. Like I'm so overwhelmed. I am so overwhelmed. That is that posting on Facebook once a day or whatever those little things are. But I think we can take a little bit of imperfect action every single day. And that is often evidenced by launching when you don't know if you're ready to launch. It can be doing yet another call when you're just not even sure if you know your offer is nailed down yet. You know, it's practicing those things that can often scare us. I have a great mentor in my life. Ooh, that's another really good thing that everyone needs to do is that everybody needs to have a mentor, a coach, a mastermind, a something where you have other people who can see your blind spots and tell you like where you're circling the drain and you don't even realize it. So that's another thing. That's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just gotta do something. You know, I, my mentor tells me, he called me one day and he said, um, Hey, did you launch that virtual assistant mastermind yet? And I said, no, you told me to do it in quarter three. And he said, well, I think you need to launch it tomorrow because I have six people that want to sign up. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm working this weekend and we launched it, you know? And so I wasn't ready at all. I threw up a sales page. I mean, it was like totally throwing spaghetti at the wall, but, and it wasn't as successful as I wanted it to be, but you know what? That's okay. We, I, I'm getting practice in launching, you know? So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. One of the things I always say is, and, and I didn't, I wish I had had, I'd, I'd seen it in the beginning. I just see it now, but in the beginning, when you're doing anything new, even if you're, you know, at, at, at a million dollars and, and I can't speak for beyond that, but the first time you do anything, you get paid an experience. Oh, and money. Oh, yeah. The right sized offer for me was so great because it was just $197, but the experience that I gained from that, I mean, and every time I've launched something new, the experience, I mean, we always launch something at, you know, at a, probably a price that people are like, what is that? Why is it so low compared to your other stuff? But I get paid an experience and it's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that uh, oftentimes we don't pay attention to that experience. We look at that number and it wasn't as successful as oh. we be. And it's like, if we could just shift our perspective a little bit, then we realize like, Oh, that was the best launch I've ever done. Because now I know, now I know what to do or not do. Exactly. Absolutely. So, um, I'm going to tell you about how I first heard your name in my life and then I'm going to let you go run your business. But I was listening to an Amy Porterfield podcast and she was actually talking about a launch and something, I don't remember specifics, but I remember Trevenia, and, and, but then I couldn't remember exactly how to pronounce it, but I remember thinking in that moment, I need a Trevenia, which is what everybody thinks, right? Yeah. So yeah. you have created a space yeah. for people to get a Trevenia or whatever they need. Yep. Absolutely. A beautiful thing. 
I, I am so beyond humbled and blessed at what we've been able to create. And we don't get it right all the time. We don't. But man, when we do, it is the best feeling in the world. And, uh, and that's just what I want more of for my clients and for my VAs to, to just really know that there is a place for them, that, that they will find the perfect fit, you know, that their priority VA is out there. And, and I just hope that that we are able to impact more people, you know, more generations to come. It's, it's super fun and cheesy as I'll get out, but I love, love what I do every day. So I started with 11 ways to win in your business. What's the best tip in there? Just give us one tip. That's just amazing. Doesn't have to be the best tip, but just, yeah, I, I mean, I think the best one is the hardest one for people to do, but the best thing that people do can do to win in their business is to get out of their inbox. Oh, yeah. I have no clue that, but yeah. So. Okay. It's the last thing that people ever want to give up because there's yeah. my inbox and what if there's an email I need to see or whatever, you know? Uh, but it is literally the best I get now. I used to get around 60, 70 emails a day. Now I, the emails that I have to answer are maybe three or four a day. It's a beautiful. Thing. I can't even comprehend that. That's why you need to outsource your email. Let's LMA that. <laughs> well, so that brings me to the close, which is, as I shared with you all, I am looking for a VA officially <laughs> now. So, Tell me specifically and all of our listeners how we get in contact with you so that we can use your amazing service. Yeah, for sure. You can go to PriorityVA.com. If you want to just go straight to consult to be able to get on a call with me, then you would just go PriorityVA.com forward slash consult. There's a, an application process really that you have to fill out to make sure that we're a fit for you because again, we want to work with high growth entrepreneurs that are really ready to scale. Uh, we are not the Philippine and yeah. we're more boutique um and so that's the best way you can follow me on all social i got really lucky with at trevenia and so uh you can follow me on social and i post a lot of tips and things that you can do to help grow and scale your business there too fantastic thank you so much it has been my absolute pleasure to have you here i've learned so much good, good. i'm so glad and thank you for having me yeah so that's that's a wrap on this edition of sell like a woman I believe in you and I believe in your business. Listen, if a hit from Tennessee can do this, you can go do it.